Welcome to Mission Park Cares, and Kristen and I want to tell you how much we appreciate you being here today. We're excited to bring you new ideas to stay healthy with breakthrough medicine and great tasting food. And we have some tips to protect your money and to keep your finances healthy. Then we'll meet my dear friend, Dane Miller, with Dose Kiwi Studio. But first, we're headed to Mission Burial Park South, where we have a baseball legend that will never, ever be forgotten. The legend of George Edward Waddell certainly hasn't died. The man affectionately known as Rube wasn't just a great baseball player, but one of the most eccentric pitchers of all time. The legend began in the Pennsylvania countryside, where Rube strengthened his arm as a child by throwing rocks at birds on his family's land. That arm helped him become one of the most dominant strikeout pitchers in America. In his 13-year baseball career, he played for nine teams from the Pittsburgh Pirates to the Philadelphia Athletics. While with the Athletics, he threw a then major league record 349 strikeouts in a season, a record that stood for 60 years and still stands today among left-handed pitchers. His most notable pitching accomplishment was pitching in two games of a doubleheader. In the second game, Waddell faced legendary pitcher Cy Young, outdueling him for 20 straight innings to a 4-2 win. Waddell was so good, he would sometimes tell his teammates to stay in the dugout or sit behind the mound just to watch him strike out the side. While he was a force on the mound, it was his antics on the field that created bigger headlines and brought the crowds. One time after an argument with an umpire, he left the stadium in the middle of the game to go fishing. He was often distracted on the mound as well. Shiny objects and puppies in the stands became irresistible. He loved to drink and spent his first signing bonus of $500 to go on a drinking binge, earning him the nickname, the Sauce Paul. And his lifelong fascination with fire trucks would cause him to run off the mound to chase after them if one drove by the stadium with its alarms blaring. His eccentric behavior led to troubles with his managers and teammates, but off the field, his legend only grew. From wrestling alligators in the circus to fighting a lion in a cage. Waddell's life never had a dull moment. He saved an entire town in Kentucky from getting flooded. He's said to have blown up a bean factory in Boston because of a foul ball. And he was suspended five games for fighting a fan in the stands. He tried his hand at acting, attempted to play professional football. That career began and ended in his first scrimmage as he broke his leg tackling the quarterback. Waddell's Major League Baseball career ended in 1910. Three years later, he was diagnosed with tuberculosis. He moved to San Antonio to live with his sister, but his health never got better. He was placed in a sanitarium in nearby Elmendorf and died on April 1, 1914. 32 years later, he was elected to the Baseball Hall of Fame for his lasting contributions to the game as the greatest drawing card in the early 20th century. Waddell's final resting place is here at Mission Park South Cemetery. His monument displays a baseball carved from solid granite and bears his full name. A tribute generously provided by his longtime manager and friend, Connie Mack. Rube Waddell is a man whose legend has never died and forever remembered at Mission Park. Now I want to introduce you to Aaron Gravala with Rise Church with some inspiring words. And then we'll celebrate lives well lived. Hey San Antonio, my name is Aaron. I'm the senior pastor here at Rise Church and wanted to give you just a little nugget of hope today, if I could. I wanna ask you a question. What are you connected to? You know, the other night I was with my six-year-old son and we were frog hunting at night. But before we went frog hunting, we got our flashlights. My flashlight was working great and he brought me his flashlight. But the problem was is that the power was really low. He tried to use it and what was interesting about that flashlight is when he turned it on it wasn't working properly. So here's what he had to do. I said he came to me and he said, Dad, my flashlight's broken. I said, it's not broken, son, it just doesn't have enough power. So I changed the batteries out and sure enough when we turned it back on, it worked great. He was able to see in the dark. Again, I want to ask you the question, what are you connected to? 
Isn't it true that so much of our life right now feels like it's not working? And it could be you right now, you feel like maybe your relationships isn't working, maybe your finances aren't working, maybe your, your physical body's not working. And my question to you again is what are you connected to? The potential of your power is determined by your power source. So what you are connected to absolutely determines how effective your life is. One of the ways you could say it is that the more whatever I put my eye to, I get full of. And I want to ask you, what are you looking at right now? What are you looking at on a regular basis? What are you, who are you around? What are the, the influences you're allowing into your life? What are you staring at? Because whatever you look at, you get, you get full of. The Bible says it like this in 2 Peter chapter 1. It says, His divine power, there it is, has given us everything we need for a godly life through knowledge of Him who called us by His own glory and goodness. That there's a divine power in this world, and guess what, not all of us are connected to it. My encouragement to you in this season is to be connected to His divine power. How do we do that practically? Hey, that could be for some of you just starting to read the Bible. Maybe it's a Bible that you understand. Maybe it is just starting off a simple prayer in the morning. God, connect me to your power. I need your power to get through today. Could be getting connected to a life-giving church. Could be starting to really get connected to life-giving people. My encouragement to you right now is if you're gonna make it in these dark times, like that flashlight, you need to be connected to the right power source. I hope that's you, and I wanna pray with you right now, if I could, just so that you and I could be connected to His divine power. Will you pray with me? God, we thank you today that we can be connected to you. We thank you that you want to be connected to us and that today, as you're speaking to us uh, in any way that you can, God, I pray that we would have some level and understanding of your power. I pray that we wouldn't be weak, but we would be strong, that you would come in with your divine power and strengthen our backs, strengthen our spirits, strengthen our core so that we can tackle anything that you bring into our lives today. I pray all these in the name of Jesus. Amen. I'd love to invite you to join us here at Rise Church TX. We have two service times on Sunday mornings. We are meeting in person. One's at 9 a.m. and one's at 10.30 a.m. You can find out all the information about our life-giving church at risechurchtx.com or at any of the social media handles uh, at Rise Church TX. I'm praying for you, believing God's best for you in this season. Kristen, I know you met an interesting doctor with some incredibly new ideas. I did. Now let's visit with Dr. Guillory at Root Causes. 
Root Causes with Dr. Guillory. Thank you so much for having us. Thanks for coming. Absolutely. What is functional medicine all about? The functional medicine is the word that we use to describe a new way of thinking about patients and about healthcare. I like to call it root causes medicine. What I do that's different from most doctors is I ask the question why people are sick. If you don't treat the reason why somebody is sick, they're never going to get well. Once you've diagnosed why somebody is sick, how do you how do you create wellness instead of just treating symptoms? Deficiency is everything your body needs that it doesn't have. And toxicity is everything your body has that it doesn't need. And so all I do all day to create wellness is remove toxicity and replace what's deficient. What role does nutrition play in the balance of deficiency and toxicity? Nutrition is a fundamental treatment path. Back in the 1800s, people were dying of rickets, which is a vitamin D deficiency, or scurvy, which is a vitamin C deficiency. And when you replace those nutrients, people survive and they thrive. When you fix the vitamin D level, just that sometimes patients get better. But that's a really good example of how important nutrition is. You talk a lot about rejuvenation. How do you encourage a body to rejuvenate? To rejuvenate a joint, we'll do ejections. We'll do good nutritional support to turn off inflammation. And there's some advanced treatments that we can do to turn on regeneration. Oxygen therapies like hyperbaric oxygen and others. So it, it just depends on the, the person. Besides the obvious differences in men and women, do you treat your female patients differently than you do the male patients? You know, sometimes hormone therapy is needed. Sometimes hormone therapy is needed for a time and then you can withdraw. Mm -hmm. And so simple things like hormones and menopause, uh, depending upon the goals, are, are very commonly treated using a root causes approach. And the same thing with men. So men come in with various complaints and we just try to focus their treatment plan to what their individual go goals are. You have some really cool equipment I saw when I came in. I mean, almost looks like you've got a submarine. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about oxygen therapy. Oxygen is really good for treating dementia. It's really good for treating neuropathy. It's really good for treating infections, uh, for treating wounds that won't heal or wounds that are taking way too long to heal. Um, it's one of the known um, anti-aging treatments. So, you know, many people will talk about telomere lengthening. I don't know if people have heard of telomeres, but hyperbaric oxygen will do that. Uh, so when you tailor the right dose of oxygen in the right way or the right method to the right person, we, we use it for all sorts of different medical conditions. What is the most rewarding part of your work? What do you like the most? When people come in here, whether it's an acute illness or a chronic illness, and they don't have any other, and they've been told, often times they've been told by multiple doctors that there's nothing we can do. When that person gets well, it is the most rewarding part. Thank you so much. That's amazing. And, and we all look forward to staying healthy and young. And, and thank you for everything you've brought to San Antonio with Root Causes. I think this is just such a gift. Thanks so much for having me. It's a pleasure. Welcome back to Mission Park Cares. We are one of our favorite places at the rooftop of the Fairmont Hotel. Right on the banks of the San Antonio River. Look what we have here, Dick. Oysters. You won't believe the benefits oysters have, especially during a time like this. Well, you're gonna have to tell me because I don't know enough. <laughs> oysters are the ultimate super, super food. They have more zinc than any other food on the planet. Oh my gosh, I, but, and zinc is incredible for it. Then. Well, it helps combat the coronavirus. And these are recent studies that I, we just read about. The Harvard School of Medicine recommends that we eat oysters when we go out to eat, especially combating COVID-19 at this wow. time. Well, I know you're not a doctor, but uh, I believe every word you're telling me. Tell me more while I power this down. <laughs> well, oysters also lower your blood pressure and help fight cancer. You can't beat that. Sweetie, would you like to give an oyster a try? I would love one. All right. And one more fun fact. Yeah, please. An oyster has 50 times more vitamins and minerals than a lean piece of chicken. Well, 
This doesn't taste like chicken, let me tell you, no. and it's not fishy either. Good. I mean, hey, got oysters. That's what you need. One of the best places to find oysters, in my opinion, is right here at the rooftop terrace of the Fairmont Hotel. I'm telling you what, it's like going to the Fairmont Clinic. I mean, <laughs> with these oysters, a little healthy, healthy meal won't hurt a thing. What else is on their menu? Oyster shooter, grilled seafood platter, Alaskan king crab, a uh, little neck uh, clams, and Maine lobster, shrimp cocktail. Hey, it goes on, ahi tuna, on and on and on. This is the place to be. What a beautiful way to spend a Sunday afternoon out here on this outdoor patio. I mean, this is incredible. On the banks of the San Antonio River to have oysters and all this seafood, it really, honest to gosh, is the best you could ever do. It's 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 fantastic. Don't you think so? Oh, I do, really. And, and what a great benefit that we've learned about that these oysters provide for us oh during this gosh. time. I mean, these things are superfood. I'm telling you, it's the right thing to do. Come on down. Kristen, we've looked at a lot of beautiful chapels and churches for weddings, and I know there's one that stands out there for you. You're right. It's the Mother Chapel at Incarnate Word. Now here's Dane Miller, who's one of the few photographers approved to take photographs in that chapel. We're here at Dos Kiwi Studio here in San Antonio with my dear friend and one of the best photographers, Dane Miller. Tell us about family photos. Where do you like to take family photos? Well, I really like shooting uh, on the river, uh, River Walk, Guadalupe River, people's homes, and of course here in the studio. But I love that element of water and rock and then the families in front of it. Dane, I know that you're part of a very exclusive list of photographers that have the privilege to shoot inside the Incarnate Word Mother Chapel. How did you get that privilege? Well, after shooting over a thousand weddings and having lots of experience, we keep the mood and we protect the sanctity of the marriage and try to you know, go around in the background so we're not being seen. Dane, tell us about this photograph right here. Well, this is Incarnate Word and we had a couple uh, they give us very limited time, so we're very, very organized. We know exactly what we're going to do. We have to clear the sanctuary, get everybody out, so that we can, you know, utilize the space with nobody in the background. What a beautiful, beautiful photograph. I mean, so well lined up, everything about it is it just perfect. It doesn't hurt that that chapel is just the most incredible, probably one of the most beautiful ones in the world. <laughs> I agree. I mean, what a way to have a piece of Europe here in San Antonio. That's correct. Yeah. So Dane, I mean, there's, you happen to have photographs here that are near and dear to my heart, right here, Peggy and Robert, but besides the photographs you take, why don't you tell us a little bit about your paintings? I went, I photographed the children, I brought uh, the images back to David that works for us, mm -hmm. and he in turn uses that as a reference and starts to paint the images, and that's how we end up with this product. So well done, and what a beautiful keepsake for a family heirloom. It really is. So Dane, when people start shopping around for a photographer to do a family portrait, of course we want them to come here to Dos Kiwi Studio, but what should they ask, what should they look for? I think the most important thing is to go online, read reviews, go to Google, see how many five-star reviews they have and see what people are saying about them. And another thing would be to uh, check to see if you like the style. We try, as you can see with the paintings of the kids, and uh, the stuff around, we try to do the more classic. We don't try to do this trendy stuff that's gonna be out of style in 10 years and you're gonna wonder why you did that. Thank you, Dane. Dose Kiwi Studio is my favorite studio and we love you, we love your passion, and we love your portraits. Thank well, you. Well, I appreciate that. I love you all back and I hope that I'm around for another few years that maybe I'll be able to do Peggy and Robert's wedding. It's time to do a financial checkup to make sure that your money will last as long as you do. Let's meet David and Leah, and let's get some really strong advice. So David and Leah, tell us a little bit about yourselves and how you uh, kind of got into the business, thinking that financial planning would be the uh, right choice for your career and to help other people. Absolutely. Leah, go ahead. My passion grew for um, helping my soldiers. I served 23 years in the military and just helping soldiers and their families, just walking through kind of just the basic needs and then carry that forward through really all facets of financial planning. So and I still love helping people every day. Well, that's good, and thank you for your service. Thank you very much. And, and really, for me, it's a family business, uh, similar to you. My dad started in 1971 with a little company called Bach & Company. Back then, we called them stockbrokers. Yeah. <laughs> yes. and, uh, and then the industry evolved to become financial planning. Um, dad was one of the first certified financial planners uh, in San Antonio, and I followed in his footsteps. So joined him in 2002. We had the opportunity to work together for a number of years growing our practice. 
Uh, it's been very gratifying to work with families and multiple generations of families now at this point. So David, when it comes to getting legal help, people go to a lawyer. But when it comes to getting financial assistance, we don't always think about going to someone for a professional opinion. What do you want everyone to know? The main thing I want people to know is we care about you like you're our own family. Okay. In fact, Leah and I are accredited investment fiduciaries. And that word fiduciary has a lot of meaning in our industry. It means we have to put the client's needs ahead of our own. And we do. And so we want clients to know that they can feel safe coming to us and talking to us. And we're always going to do what's best for them. So where do you start? I mean, like, I mean, what's the first thing you're asking me to do? We start with a process um, and a checklist. With that as a background, we will ask a lot more questions as we sit down and talk to them, much the same way as I'm sure any of your needs consultants do as well. Uh, and as we find out more, it leads us down into more areas of conversation, such as estate planning, and have you put a will in place? Do you have a directive to physicians? Do you have durable power of attorneys? All these different areas. So it's, it's a process that, that opens with a very initial exploration and then deepens as we, as we go further in the relationship. And just like prearranging your funeral, what you do is also such a gift to the person's family. I like the word that, that you said you're a fiduciary and you have a fiduciary responsibility with these families. So as far as like a fee structure, is there something that you work out in advance so that there's no surprises to them at a later date? We're required to disclose in advance how we're gonna to work together, what that relationship looks like, what the fee structure would look like, and, and give clients the opportunity to be comfortable with choosing the way in which they work with us. So David, how does pre-planning a funeral fit into an overall estate plan from your point of view? Oh, Kristen, I think it's a very natural fit uh, to do that. Um, we're asking our clients to take a look at, God forbid, you know, if you're not here tomorrow, which we hope is not the case, what do you want to have happen with your family? And so a natural extension of that is, um, and when that happens, do you want your family members to be under the burden of having to make difficult emotional decisions at that point in time? Or does it make more sense to plan that in advance, same way we plan everything else in your financial life in advance? We also believe in insurance as well. Insurance should be left for those that are left behind. Absolutely. And to continue on with their, their lives. So, and that's what y'all do so well. And um, there's so many ways you can use life insurance. First and primary, you want to protect the people that are left behind that were depending upon that person's income. Even beyond that, even when people are retired and they're looking to most efficiently pass the estate on to the next generation and or the charities that they most care about, the things they're passionate about. Never had anybody tell me I'd like to leave more money to the government. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and life insurance is a very clever way to help make sure they give as much to the family and to the charities they care about as possible. David, even though a lot of families are, you'll recommend insurance, what other plans should they be making for their estate? We've got a software tool called EverPlans which helps our clients walk through step-by-step step in a question-based format, very friendly on the, on the computer. Um, have you thought about this? Does your uh, spouse know what your plans are when you're gone? What kind of service do they want to have? Are there some favorite recipes you want to leave behind? I mean, all kinds of things because as we all know, as we get a little bit older, um, it becomes about legacy. And we want to help make sure our clients are leaving behind not just a financial legacy, but a life legacy. So Leah, is it ever too late to start estate planning? I mean, if you're already past retirement, is it too late? Absolutely not. Um, I heard a quote several years ago, and it's one of my favorites. You know, the, the best day to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best day is today, and it's never too late. Is there anything else you'd like to share with us today? We just would like for folks to know that whether we're talking about um, pre-needs, uh, funeral planning, uh, estate planning, financial planning, it's really important not to put this off. It's too important to you, your future, and your family's future. And we encourage people to come see you, and we encourage people to come see us. Now, how can they find you? Well, you can find us uh, on the internet, uh, perspectivewealthpartners.com. Um, you can certainly call us on the phone, 210-785-3442. Well, thank you both for being here. It's a blessing, thank you. Thank you for joining us today on Mission Park Cares. And we love bringing new ideas to you every week to keep your family healthy, wealthy, and wise. And when you think about your family, remember that the best time to start planning for your future is today. And it's so easy to do. Just log in to missionparks.com and click on to plan ahead. We'll see you next week. And always remember, at Mission Park, it's our mission to care.